Believe that Jesus died on a cross for your sins and that he rose from the dead in three days. He is coming back for a people that are wholly devoted to him. God bless you. And we want you to be wholly devoted to God today. Some of us, we're so focused on what we're going to eat tomorrow or what we're going to do today and what job we're going to have in five years. But I want you to really think about where your soul is going to go when you perish away. I see many people that are supporting the cause. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Where's your soul going to go when you die? I want you to go to heaven when you die. Some of us are so consumed in arrogance. We think we are better than everyone else. We feel as if we get money, then we can step all over the poor. We think if we're educated, then we're smarter than everyone else. And we don't need to listen to advice that comes from another human being. But the reality is, is that iron sharpens iron. And as iron sharpens iron, that means that we all can learn from each other. There are things you can teach me. There are things that I can teach you. And what I want to teach you today is of the most importance to give your life to Jesus Christ. Give your life to God while you still have time. Most are running out of time. Most have ran out of time. There are people that did not get a chance to wake up today, but you did. And there's people that are in hell right now. They're burning in sulfur and fire. God bless you all because they rejected the free gift of God. God bless you. And I'm so happy that a lot of you are honking and a lot of you are encouraging us. But I want you also to start encouraging others to give their lives to God. As Christians, we can't hide in the church. We can't hide at home. We can't hide at work and say, oh, it's not my job to preach to people. No, Jesus said for all disciples to go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. Every soul matters. There is probably a thousand cars we saw already just within this one of uh, our and we all want these thousand souls to come to the lord today we want heaven to be flooded with souls flooded with people that love god and love god's presence we don't want hell to be loaded with sinners people that rejected the will of god don't reject god's will don't reject god's grace but accept it instead because when you accept god you receive life and when you receive life you can help others receive life and the source of that is jesus christ god bless you the source of that i think i know him i think that was austin god bless you there's a lot of souls out here jesus wants you to give your life to him today Stop waiting around. Stop thinking that you have so much time because time runs out. And I don't want that time to run out on your life. I don't want you to wake up in hell. I don't want you to say, oh, no one ever told me to believe in the gospel. No one ever taught me anything. Well, we're teaching you to obey the gospel today. All right, brother, it's my turn to hold it. Hallelujah. Good morning, Bustleton Avenue. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore put off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. The world is full of darkness. The world is full of evil, poverty, debt, and wars. And we see them constantly. We even saw a recent assassination attempt against Trump. But you know what? The Lord our God is so good that he protected him. The Lord our God is so good that if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he will not only protect you, but he will help you. He will provide for you. He preserves your life. God preserves the life of the righteous and the godly. And today we have a call to turn from sin and to turn towards the Lord. And today we see that we are across from a food market that says hello. And lamb gyros are very good, but the lamb of God is very much better. The Lamb of God is better than a lamb gyro, and even halal belongs to the Lord because God made halal. God made the lambs. He made the sheep. He made the goats. He made every creature on the earth. And the Bible says to preach the word of God to every living creature because all of creation testifies of the Lord. And deep down, you know that's the truth because John 14, 6 says, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man comes to the Father except through me. And you see, there's only light through God. And if you're not in the light, you're in the dark. And the world is full of darkness. And if you have darkness inside of you, how great is that darkness? Guys, it is not fun to be a slave to sin. You are a slave to the master that you obey. And you will be a slave to your own desires. And we're telling you today to break free to break free from that sin cycle, to break free from evil, to break free from that darkness. And we proclaim the light of the gospel, the light of Jesus Christ onto your life. 
Because when the Bible says to put on the armor of light, it's telling you to put on the armor of God because God is light, okay? And you have a calling and a message. Many of you out here are on your way to church or some other place. And you see, your purpose is not just to sit in church and have a nice service and then go to brunch afterwards. You see, you have a calling and a purpose to go and witness because the Bible says that when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, that God has given you power and to be a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, but with the light of the gospel, you see, the Bible says not to hide your light underneath of a uh, underneath of a basket, to remove the basket and to let your light shine before all men. And every single one of you who believes in Jesus Christ has the light of God inside of you. And I'm calling you today. I'm actually asking you, are you going to be an end time warrior? Are you going to be a warrior who puts on the armor of God, who puts on this armor of light to go and fight the enemy? You see, and here's how you fight the devil. You see, first you submit to God. And then you resist the devil and the devil will flee. How many of us are submitted to God? I'm asking you today, are you submitted to God? Because you're not submitted to God if you go to church once a week. You're not submitted to God if you don't read the word of God. But you're submitted to God if you keep his commandments. And if you love him with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your strength, all of your mind. You see, and you love the Lord your God when you finally rest on his grace. God doing for you what you cannot do for yourself. His unmerited favor. The Lord loves you so much that he literally died for you. And somebody out here needs to hear this. That Jesus Christ loves you so much. He literally died for you, not only for you to be seated in heavenly places with his father for eternity, but so that you could also go and be a light, that you can be Jesus to all of the world, to your family, to your friends, to your coworkers, to everybody. I'm calling you today to put on the armor of light. Put on that helmet of salvation. Don't let anybody or any enemy sneak into your mind. You see, the Bible says to not be ignorant of the devices of Satan lest he take advantage of you. And the enemy, we're saying that enough is enough. The enemy can no longer take advantage of you. And the earth and the fullness of it belongs to the Lord, including this corner and the whole area of Feasterville and Philadelphia. You see, this area belongs to the Lord. And we're telling you today, be an end time warrior for the Lord. Go and serve God. Put on the armor of God. You see, and you have one offensive weapon. And the offensive weapon as a warrior for God is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Do you know the word of God? Do you have the word of God? Do you have... Do you have a Bible? We're asking somebody here who needs a message. If anybody needs prayer or healing or deliverance, or if anybody just wants to hear the gospel, know about the Lord, come to this corner and we'll pray for you. We'll help you. We'll be with you. And I'm going to ask you a question. The Bible says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find any faith on the earth? And we're asking you, do you believe in Jesus Christ? You believe in Jesus? God bless you. God bless you guys. You see, now the Bible says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find any faith on the earth? And the thing is, is that there's this parable about the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. And you see, five of them had no oil in their lamps. Come but on. the five who did have oil in their lamps, they were able to be with the Lord. And you get oil by Come spending on. time with God, by the Holy Spirit Come pouring on. out into your cup and allowing your cup to overrun. Come but you see, if you have no oil, when the Lord returns, you're not going to be with him. And I'm asking you today, do you have oil in your lamp? Are you wise or are you foolish? Are you still doing the things of the world and living in darkness? Or are you walking in the light? Are you abiding oh, by man. God and walking in the spirit? Yeah. And this is not a works-based doctrine because we're saved by grace through faith alone. But I'll tell you, it is impossible. It is impossible to be with the Lord if you have no good works because faith without works is dead and genuine faith produces good works. You see, are you like the wise or the foolish virgin? I want you guys to think about that today. Okay, God bless you. God bless you. I'm asking you today. Now, when Jesus returned, he looked at all 10 virgins and every single one of them was sleeping. And this is a call. Wake up because the night is far spent and the day is at hand. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. And we don't want you guys to be sleeping anymore. It's time to wake up and see what is going on. Because when you see, when you see the truth, when you see the truth that Jesus is Lord, when you see the truth that there is evil in the world, that Satan runs the music industry, that there is sex trafficking and, and almost, almost uh, President Trump almost got killed. And you see that there's darkness in the world and things are going to get worse. You see, and if one day persecution comes to the states and you can't be a Christian anymore, what are you going to do? Are you going to take the mark of the beast 
or are you going to serve God and pro proclaim the, the faith? And a lot of people are not willing to live for God. A lot of people don't actually know the Lord. And we're calling you today to live for God, to know the Lord. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Are you living for Christ or are you living for yourself? Because you cannot do both. You see, your body is either a vessel for honor or a vessel for dishonor. You know, and you're either serving God or you're not. You see, and you cannot serve two masters because you will either love one and hate the other. And that's the thing is that so many of us are so full of ourselves. And I'm asking you today to empty yourself out. If your cup is filled with yourself, if you're so full of yourself, you're pursuing your desires. You're doing all the things that you want to do. You're living in the flesh. You, you can't be full of God. And you got to be full of God. Empty yourself out before the Lord and submit to him. Say, Jesus, I want to be full of you because the Holy Spirit, when you accept Jesus Christ, the third person of God, the Holy Spirit is a holy God. His name is holy. He's just a spirit that is holy. And let me tell you is that God says, ye therefore be holy as I am holy. Consecrate yourselves. How many people are living holy? How many people are consecrated before the Lord? And you see, you cannot do this on your own accord, but by the grace of Jesus Christ. And this is God knocking. This is God saying, hey, today's the day to get right with me. Today's the day to put away those sinful things. Put off those cigarettes. Put away the pornography. Put, stop going to the bars and the clubs. Come to me, son. Come to me, daughter. I love you. And the Lord is telling you to put on the light and to empty yourself out before him and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So then when your day of death comes, you won't truly be dead. You're going to you're gonna encounter God and have this judgment before the Lord. And the Lord will say, well done, good and faithful servant. But at the end of your life, you want to pour yourself out as a drink offering before the Lord. And you see, this is how the drink offerings worked in the Bible. We all know about the animal sacrifices, the animal sacrifices for sin. And we don't need an animal sacrifice anymore because the perfect lamb of God, Jesus Christ, died for us. So we don't need to continue making these animal sacrifices. But you see, the drink offering was poured out onto the coals and it was a sweet fragrance to God. And at the end of your life, you want to pour yourself out as that sweet fragrance of God for all the works that the Holy Spirit did through you and, and, and allowing him to move. And you want to be the sweet fragrance of Christ to all those around you. Do you smell like death and sin or do you smell like life and the sweet fragrance of Christ to all those around you? The Bible says to be not conformed by the world, but to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And I'm, I'm, I'm asking you today, is your mind transformed? Is your mind renewed? Is your mind new? Do you think of, of, of how to serve God, of how to be a good servant? Do you think about heavenly things or are you thinking about yourself and the world and the death and things of it? I'm calling you today, put on the mind of Christ. Put on that helmet of salvation. Stop letting the enemy destroy you because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And many people out here have their lives stolen. They, they, they have their dreams stolen. They have the aspirations killed. And, they, and, and he, they have their lives destroyed in all these def different areas because the devil wreaks havoc in different areas of your life. And the Lord is going to bring back all that the enemy has stolen. Where you've had depression, God wants to give you joy. Where you've had depression, God wants to give you joy. Where you have anxiety, God wants to give you peace. Because the peace of God which surpasses all understanding is going to guard your heart and your mind. And I'm telling you today, you don't have to live anxious anymore. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid to drive. You don't have to be uh, worried about these things. No, put off, put off the, your worries. Put off your worries for, for tomorrow and the days ahead. Because be anxious about nothing. God is going to give you a peace, a supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding. And if you're in darkness and you're in a storm, I promise you, if you call out to Jesus Christ, he will never leave you nor forsake Amen. you. He is the light and he will shine bright in that storm. Call out to God today. God bless. Hallelujah. Let's Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Check it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. There's a way that you can walk in life that is perfect. There is a decision that you can make today that is perfect. The perfect decision that you can make in a perfect way in which you can walk in life is through God. Many of us, we are so victim to the evils of this world. We give in to witchcraft. We give in to false religions. We give in to overeating, overindulging in things that 
were supposed to be good and beneficial for us, but we make it a nuisance. You see, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that godliness with contentment is great gain. Something that today we don't really practice is being grateful. We always are looking at something that someone else has and saying, oh, if I had that, my life would be better. If I had more kids, my life would be better. If I had a better car, if I had a different house, if I had a, a better wife, my life would be better. But in a sense, everything that you have now is perfect and is available for use to God. That means that wherever you are in your life, whatever you have right now in your life, God gave it to you for a reason, especially your body. And he wants you to glorify him with your body. So you don't need to covet anything that anyone else has. You don't need to say, God bless you. You don't need to say, I need a million dollars or I need that job. You need God. Because when God is in your life, God will give you all things that pertain to life and godliness. He'll give you whatever it is that you're lacking. Even in the Bible, it says that the Lord will be your shepherd and you shall not want. That means that you won't be lacking anything that you need for your assignment and mission in life. Now, I want you to understand that God is very upset with the nation. He's very upset with the city because of sin. Most people, God bless you, most people will say, I can do whatever I want. God's happy with me. But the Bible says that every day the Lord is angry with the wicked and that he hates all workers of iniquity. I don't want you to stand before God condemned. I want you to stand before God justified. God bless you guys. I want you to stand before God justified. And the only way you can stand by God justified is by giving your life to Jesus Christ, believing that he died on the cross for your sins, that he rose from the dead in three days, and that he is coming back for a people that are solely devoted to him. We solely devote ourselves to our family. If they ask us of anything, we're there. If our job says you want overtime pay, we run and we get it, we're there. But when God says, I want you to seek me with all of your heart so that I may be found, you say, oh, I don't have to time. You have time to scroll on your phone all day. You have time to watch Netflix constantly. How come you don't have time to read the book of Psalms and get inspiration for your soul? How come you don't have time to pray at least 10 minutes a night on your bed with your family? You make time for everything else. And the Bible says that there's going to be a time for you if you don't repent, a time of judgment, a time of wrath. And I don't want anyone to be subject to God's wrath, but instead I want them to be partakers of his divine nature. I want them to be sharers of the good gospel. I want them to be citizens of heaven. I want you guys to be loaded with joy each and every single day. We lack joy a lot in our society. We have people that are just going through the motions. They could have a picket white fence. They could have a wife. They could have kids. They could have a nice job. But then they still wake up in the morning as if, what is there to life? Well, what more there is to life is God. God is the one that can fill the void inside of your heart. God is the one that can restore the pain and the brokenness that you've experienced in the past. God is the one that is worthy of praise. So I want you to praise God right now. The Bible says, if you call on the name of Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Not if you smoke a cigarette, not if you smoke weed, not if you drink alcohol will you be saved. But if you call on the name of Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And I said, Jesus, I didn't say Allah. I didn't say Buddha. I didn't say Confucius. I didn't say Donald Trump. I didn't say Joe Biden. I said, if you call on the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. And I want you all to be saved. I want you all to be rescued from sin because sin separates you from God. Every time that you disobey God, or even if you don't believe in the gospel, you are upsetting and breaking the creator's heart because he's longing for your presence. He's longing for a relationship with you. He's longing to be joined to your spirit. But instead, you reject God's spirit and you take on the spirit of the world. And the Bible says that all the things that are in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. They are not of the Father. So when you're lusting after women, when you're lusting after men, when you are trying your best to accumulate wealth so you can look big and bad and mighty to other people, you yourself, you're not of God. You're operating according to the power of darkness, the power of Satan. And the Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Satan is the one that is telling you you have depression. Satan is the one that is telling you that you're confused and he's making you believe a lie because the Bible says that he's the father of lies. But I want you to meet the spirit of truth. I want you to meet Jesus Christ, the one that will lead you into liberty and freedom in every area of your life. It's Jesus Christ. Oh, you're struggling with addiction? 
You can't get off the crack pipe or you can't get off of heroin. You can't stop smoking weed. You can't stop smoking cigarettes with nicotine in it. Well, the Bible says that whoever the son says free, they are free indeed. You want to be free from your addictions? Get addicted to Jesus Christ and he'll break all of those worldly and demonic addictions in your life that are destroying everything that you touch. Some of you guys are so destructive in the way that you think. Some of you are so destructive in the way that you talk, but God wants to clean you up. God wants to bless you. God wants you to live a new life of holiness. He wants you to be set apart for his glory so that you, you can have a better family. When you go inside of your house, you can have peace inside of your home. You won't be complaining about a husband or complaining about your son or complaining about a wife, but instead you guys will be praising God together because in life you're going to go through some hard times. You're going to go through some turmoil and tribulation, but the Bible promises that through faith in God, you will overcome every obstacle that is set before you. And the obstacle that's set before you today is sin. Hop over that obstacle by leaning on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hop over that obstacle by walking by God's Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is saying today that He wants to take care of you. Some of you are longing for a father figure. Some of you have grown up without a father figure and now you're inside of a, a family, a marriage, and you don't know how to take care of your kids because you, have, you never had anyone take care of you. But I want to tell you a promise from God. In the book of Psalm chapter 27, God says, if your parents forsake you, he will take care of you. He says that if these evil parents, and by the way, everyone is evil without God. If these evil parents know how to give good gifts to their children, how much better are the gifts that your holy and eternal father can give you? He can give you the Holy Spirit where he helps you to be one that triumphs over the devil's schemes in life. He can help you to triumph over poverty, help you to triumph over sickness and disease. But some of us are sick in our mouths and our minds. Both. We speak curses. We speak bitterness. We think about the most disgusting things. And then we wonder why our life sucks. Your life sucks because the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if inside of your heart, you're just thinking of masturbation and thinking of fornication and you're thinking of how to steal money from people and how to be so prideful and arrogant, you are going to feel terrible. But instead, if you meditate upon God's word in your heart and you store it deep inside of your heart, you won't sin against him. You'll walk blameless before the Lord. God wants to bless each and every single one of you today. But some of us are running away from the blessing of God because we think there's a blessing elsewhere. Don't you know that in scripture it says that the angel or that Satan, he appears as an angel of light. That means he masquerades himself as a good person when really he's a terrible and evil person. Some of you think that you are walking the right way and you think you're making the right decisions. But even the scripture says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end it leads to death. In this generation of wickedness and evil, a lot of us, we think that we're pure in the way that we think, but we're loaded with wickedness. We're loaded with sin. And as we're loaded with sin and wickedness, we are getting further and further and further away from the creator who made us to live in holiness. God made us to be righteous, righteous through our faith in Jesus Christ, not righteous in faith towards anything else. But I want you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. As we've stood out here today, we've seen probably over a thousand cars already. The traffic is booming today. And there's going to be a, a big traffic line going to hell when it's judgment time. The Bible says that broad is the way that leads to destruction. I don't want you to be on a broad path where everyone is and they're on their way to hell because they rejected God. God bless you. Because they rejected the Savior. I don't want you to be that way. I want you instead to walk that narrow path where not many people will find it. Only few. But they'll have the righteousness of God. They'll be standing in right standing before.